Hi. Um, we've, we've heard a lot of talks today or this morning um, proving that students have a passion and an, an enthusiasm for, for making positive and meaningful change in the world. We see it through the Kids Helping Kids program, we see it through our Leadership Academy. Uh, we've raised tens of thousands of dollars at the Minithon. Countless other student-driven clubs are affecting these changes in the world. What's also interesting is that we're able to do that in the high school as well. We've established a, a course that links industry with schools. So our students can have some experience making meaningful, meaningful work and, and embracing meaningful challenges that industry executives actually face in their daily lives. So the challenges, or the beautiful thing about this is that these challenges are real. As you can imagine, every corporation or every industry faces a myriad of challenges. Um, engineering challenges, of course, marketing challenges, sales challenges, technical challenges. You, um, just imagine all the things that goes on in a corporation. Those are the type of challenges that they bring to our, to our table as students. Additionally, we recognize that more perspectives are better. Right? The more, more eyes we get on our problem, the more chances we get to embrace different um, ideas and, and, and methods for solving problems is better. So we reached out to neighbor schools, neighboring schools. Right now we're working with, with South Fayette and Bethel Park and Peters Township. Um, those student teams work with our student teams to solve problems and then ultimately those problems get you know, the, the, rather the solutions to those problems get presented to our corporate partners. So we've, we've worked on real problems, a variety, maybe six to eight problems at a time. Each team gets in front of their executives, in front of the engineers, and says, this is the solution that we've we found. This is the path that we've used to find those solutions, and here's how and why you should implement them. So um, we've embraced this idea that students have the ability and the passion to solve real problems, and we put them to work in a classroom. I always remind my students that the first solution to problems is really the best. Right? We're, not, we're, we're driving Mustang GTs and F-150s, not Model T Fords. The Model T Ford was great and it was a solution to a problem that existed, but of course we've evolved and, and, and now we're driving much better vehicles. The same is true for this class. It's been an evolution. It's, it's mirrored the lesson that I've given for each of these individual problems that the students face. When we first put this together, we had student, or we had a team of teachers from South Fayette, a team of teachers from Upper St. Clair, and we worked together with this institute called LUMA that has this really interesting way of, of looking at problem solving through human-centered design. We wrote a curriculum, got a couple of great industry partners, all clad in EA Fab, were enthusiastic about um, the idea of, of of this programming in the schools, but also recognize that there's some benefit to them. They get essentially free consultants with fresh minds. And then we jumped right in. We, we thought, well, let's put students from, from Upper St. Clair, students with South Fayette, we'll mix each team, have those teams work from remote locations to solve these problems, and go out and, and make their case to why their solutions should be implemented. This last part is one of those things that look really, really good on paper and sounds good when I say it out loud. We found that this doesn't work so well. Like maybe, um, maybe it would work better if, if the districts had the exact same schedule so the classes aligned perfectly and students met at the same time. That was an issue. Additionally, teachers are different. We have different philosophies about what things should be sort of stressed as we go through these problem solving methods with our students. So there's some hurdles that, that we sort of needed to overcome with, for this first iteration. The next year we recognized that there's some room in our schedule. So we, we branched out even further. We added some community elements to this. So we reached out to the Animal Rescue League, the Allegheny Land Trust, um, the Upper St. Clair Business Office, even the school itself. So we started off with just working within our community, working on problems, present those solutions. The next step we thought, we would meet that first problem with the mixed teams, sort of slowly get them to that point. So working with Allclad, we kept teams of Upper St. Clair students together, teams of South Fayette students together, still exchanging ideas on collaboration days, um, offer some advice. So, so the interaction was still happening between the teams, but they weren't mixed. And then finally, we, when we went back with EA Fab again, we tried mixing the students really discovered we have the same issues. The, the mixing of the schedules, the, uh, the, you know, the different philosophies. And at this point we're starting to recognize that maybe these, this mixing the teams is actually bringing the level of solutions down a little bit, which is not what we want, right? We're, we're looking to deliver really positive solutions for our industry partners. But generally, we've got a pretty good handle on how this should work and we're ready to branch out. So we've, at this point, 
reach out to other schools. You know, we, we've gotten tremendous feedback from our industry partners. The administration at the schools are over the moon about what we're doing here. So we've now, now we bring in Bethel Park, we bring in Mount Lebanon, we add another, a third industry partner, Universal Electric gets on board. Um, so it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. At this point, um, this is where we stand today. So we have since brought in another school district. Peters Township now, is, now works with us. So we work with South Fayette, Peters Township, um, Bethel Park, and we brought in another industry partner. So now we work with OZ Enterprises, still work with these Stallworth, Stallworth um, partners, EA Fab and, and Allclad have been rocks. And we have a, a company that works sort of behind the scenes. They, they're not ready to commit their time and it is a commitment by these industry executives to, to develop these problems and to give the, the, the full commitment of time for the students. So these guys have given us software, uh, high-end computer software, so when we develop prototypes, we can test them virtually in our lab. This doesn't work without the right kind of students. So um, we need critical thinkers in this class. If, if all, if this, you can't just go to Google and type in the problem that you're facing and have the first thing come up and there's your answer, right? That would, be, that would hardly be worthwhile. Um, certainly, we should use the internet, should get online, should look at those resources critically and understand how they maybe apply to the particular problem that you're working on or recognize that it doesn't or even question the source. Um, so critical thinking about what you're finding online, go to your textbooks, but of course the books aren't in the back. I mean, the answers aren't in the back of the textbook. So refer to the textbooks, talk to your teachers, um, think critically, really synthesize all this information that you're getting um, from your normal sources. Need motivated students. This is not the type of a class where we search for numbers, right? We've talked a lot about that today. We don't, we don't cover a unit, take quizzes, take a unit test, and then move on to the next thing. So students chasing numbers on a piece of paper doesn't work. The type of students that make this class successful are motivated by the action of solving the problem itself. So students that take this class ought to be interested in solving problems, embrace these challenges, maybe even interested in considering engineering or business as a career. So they're motivated to learn and, and to solve these problems intrinsically. Communication and collaboration go together, right? Um, the communication part it's sometimes difficult at first, right? Giving, exchanging an idea, being open with uh, an idea that you have for solving a problem is a challenge sometimes. You don't want people looking at you funny or saying, oh, that's a stupid idea. But also, accepting criticism without having your feelings hurt, right? Being, being able to accept critique and, and recognize that maybe you don't have a good idea or maybe your idea is good but needs to be explained in a better way or manipulated or, or, or something to that effect. Even giving critique in a nice way is part of communication, right? Just saying your problem or your, your idea is dumb is a terrible way to communicate. But there is a way to give critique and, 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 a, and flush out what somebody's idea or what proposal might be. So this communication happens within the teams, of course, uh, but also between the teams and teachers and between the teams and our industry partners, um, even vendors, perhaps, as they're looking for solutions. So that communication happens all the time. The collaboration is key, and it's not, and it's Definitely collaboration, not competition. So we've talked a little bit, or we've heard a little bit today about how competition um, can be detrimental. I don't think always, oftentimes competition can be good. But in this case, our industry partners are looking for solutions to problems. Um, each of our teams are working on different problems. So there's no, there's no benefit to students keeping information to themselves, right? We want everyone to do well. So they, so when we work, when we meet with our engineers or our marketing people or our executives, whatever they happen to be, our students are collaborating with them to try to find a, a, a solution. There's this, everyone's trying to lift each other up. That collaboration is, is key. This last part is interesting. When I was a kid or in high school, I took every opportunity I could to go on a field trip. Love to get out of school. We usually, it was usually someplace interesting. Um, and, I, and it might amount to two or three days in an entire year. This particular class, we miss much more days. So on the face of it, sounds interesting and exciting, except that the students taking these classes are usually taking the AP classes and the honors classes. So missing a day becomes a burden on them. And we don't just miss a couple of days a year, we miss four days per industry partner. So each for, for a full day, we go and, and meet with our executives, tour the industry, or tour the manufacturing plant, sit down with partners within that industry who help uh, explain and further develop what the problem is they're working on, and then we get to work the rest of the day right on that problem, make sure we have a full understanding of what we're working on. That's one day. 
And then through the course of six to eight weeks, we have a couple of collaboration days where our industry partners come to us. We sit down at a table, share ideas, get direction, make sure that students are going in the right direction. So that's two half day field trips. And then we have another full day where our students go and stand in front of our partners and make a case as to why they should be implementing their solutions. So that's a lot of time to miss and it's a burden on students. So we have to make sure that we get students that are willing to take on these challenges and make up the work that they're gone or that they miss while they're gone. In looking for these types of students, uh, we, want, we want to make sure we're bringing the best solutions to our, to our industry partners, right? So we want to make sure we're getting the right students that can do that. And we thought, another one of these things that looked best on paper but didn't really pan out, we thought, let's have them fill out a resume, put an application together, um, we'll do a blind re review of the application, accept them, and then they sign up for the class. And the first year it worked out all right. I think there was a lot of buzz about the class and everyone's really jazzed up about getting involved. But subsequently, it became a bit, of, a bit confusing, I think. Students didn't know when to sign up or maybe what to go on a resume. And at the same time, they're filling out an application to get into a high school class. They're also filling out applications to get into college. And our enrollment was starting to drop. So um, I, th I think that this was, was sort of weeding out students that we really wanted in the class. Subsequently, we recognize that this is an honors level class and, and the depth and breadth of the things that we cover in this class warrants an honors designation. So we've, we've recognized it as an honors class, moved it around in our program of studies a little bit, and hopefully we'll see a shift in enrollment that brings those, those honors level students into this class. It's impossible for me to go over, and I just want to bore you going over with going over all the different problems that we've we've covered. We have 75, probably 100, maybe uh, problems that we worked over, worked on over the course of of four years now. The point of this slide is really to to touch or, or to to make note that. This is not an engineering class. We house it in, the, in our fab lab area. Um, we have tremendous capabilities with solid modeling and prototyping and CNC machine laser engraving. We have tremendous ability and we house the class in that area. But this is not meant to be focused on the engineering track, right? We're not looking for just engineering students. We're looking for problem solving students. Anybody that, that is, has a passion for the, you know, and motivation for this problem solving. Um, you know, we see uh, one of the things up here you might see is feasibility cookware. So this is a research and marketing problem where all, all Cloud was, was wanting to capitalize on trends in cooking, home cooking, you know, professional cooking. Um, so students did some research and, and, and figured out what sort of trends people were having in terms of meals they're eating or the types of cooking they're doing. I forget the answer, but let's say it was Japanese cookware. So they, may, they would have suggested Listen, these, these are the trends that, that's going on in home cooking. Japanese is a popular dish right now, or Japanese cookware, or Japanese dishes are popular right now. Perhaps you could develop a cookware or a serving dish or something that capitalizes on this. So clearly not engineering specifically, but a problem nonetheless. Um, virtual reality has, has become popular in the last few years. Our, one of our companies, EA Fab, develops essentially radiators about the size of this stage, and they wanted to be able to Get, get that image or, or their products to a customer or a client, potential client that they could see. So they tasked our students with designing a way to implement their product into a virtual reality world so that this, their, their clients could walk around, move it, manipulate it, get up close and see these virtual solid models. So that's probably more of an engineering project. But I guess the point is that they're all types of projects. So the value in this class, um, certainly we have tremendous teachers, not only in the school, but all across the land, right? Student teachers are bringing um, great academics to our, to our kids and they're doing a great job in the classroom. Additionally, students are naturally talented. We all have our own gifts that we bring to the table. So this class allows these, these sort of a combination of these things. So, so people, students are bringing their own talents and gifts to the table along with what they're learning in these classrooms, put them together to solve these real problems. When I, and I mentioned this already, this is key. These problems are nonfiction. Right? These are actual problems and our industry partners, these executives are, are hoping to implement solutions to these real world problems. So unlike in, the, in your academics classes where you are given a problem to, to apply a mathematical formula to, prove that it works, find you get the right solution, or you do a lab to, to prove a scientific principle, find that that's all well and good, but they're a bit contrived. These are not contrived, they're actual problems, and there's problems that similar that you'd be, they're similar to problems that you'd be facing as you get out of college. 
I mentioned the importance of communication already within the group, but there's also an element to that outside of just inner like, personal communication, right? We use email in a certain way when we're, when we're working through, you know, having a professional discussion, texting, phone calls, um, web conferences, all these sort of communication efforts through technology um, need to be re re uh, refined and, and worked through in this class. And finally, we do presentations. I mentioned several times already, the students stand up in front of um, high-powered executives, in front of administration from school, press sometimes, and make a case for why their solution should be implemented, uh, and talk about the process that they go through. I'm not necessarily a teacher that thinks every student ought to be great orators and wonderful presenters. Um, there's certainly fields out there where you don't need to be presenting, um, but if you come out of this class, you will have that experience under your belt for sure. Um, students are well prepared and well versed in giving high pressure, high stakes presentations. Accountability. Um, finally, so we have, I mean, there's, there's a level of accountability when you go to take a test, right? You go and you, you write down, I mean, you prepare for a test, you write down these an answers and you, and you hope that you, you're doing well and you go fill out a Scantron, there's a level of accountability. That level is ramped up tremendously when you have to face, face someone. So if you have accountability to a partner on a team, that's different than having accountability to a piece of paper. Or if you have accountability to these executives that have given you a lot of their time and resources, that level of accountability isn't met typically in a classroom. So that's a pretty high stakes, um, valuable lesson you learn in these classes. So the, I'm happy to have been part of this. I mean, I, I think that I, I'm part of Kids Helping Kids, Leadership Academy. I'm seeing all these things happen outside of the classroom. I'm thrilled that we get to do this inside the classroom as well. This, this industry and school partnership is, is, um, has been tremendous. I think it provides students a really great opportunity. My hope is that as it's branched out into the, like the, the local school districts here, it will continue to branch out and branch out, and this would be more common in school districts across the land. So. Thank you for your attention here today. Appreciate it.